Good morning. Creator of all, sustainer of all, saviour of all. Your glory and majesty are beyond our understanding. Your power too awesome to behold. And yet your love enfolds us as a gentle breeze. Saviour of all, sustainer of all, creator of all. We bless your holy name. Friends, it is by and through the love of God that we are called to worship, called to witness, called to be a community of faith and called to spread the good news of the gospel of Christ. So let us come together in our hearts and worship God. So welcome to our morning worship in Custody Church and a special warm welcome to our friends and colleagues from How Trinity Parish in Afford and from across our various communities. You are most welcome with us this morning, wherever and whenever you may be watching this. I hope and pray and you, that you and your families are all keeping well. In our service today, we're going to follow one of the themes that we started to look at towards the end of June. We've been looking at the characteristics of God, as mentioned in Psalm 85, which says, Show us your unfailing love, Lord, and grant us your salvation. Love and faithfulness meet together. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Faithfulness springs forth from the earth and righteousness looks down from heaven. So the main characteristics that we've been looking at so far are peace, salvation, faithfulness and righteousness. And in our service today we'll be looking and thinking about that final and arguably the most important characteristic of God, which is love. So we'll begin to think about it today. And we'll be following it up in our midweek reflection on Wednesday. If you wish to catch up on any of the other characteristics that we've looked at already, then the services and the reflections are still available on both the Kushnin Tuch and the Upper Donside Facebook pages. So many thanks to Somersault, Ron and Janet, who have kindly agreed to help us out with the readings this morning. There are four Bible readings uh, one that I'll be doing, which is Psalm 33, verses 1 to 5, and then verses 18 to 22. Uh, then the second reading, Ephesians 3, verses 14 to 21. We'll be looking at the third reading, 1 Corinthians 13. And finally, uh, 1 John 4, verses 7 to 21. Full details of all of this, the hymns, the readings, everything, will be on the Facebook and YouTube pages. The end of our first prayers, as usual, I will invite us to say the Lord's Prayer together. I'm also delighted that Laura, Rachel, Linda, Francesca and Imogen are again able to help us out with our hymns. We have four hymns, thank you very much indeed. As the deer pants for water, in heavenly but love abiding, Father, we love you and we sing a love that sets all people free. So let us come together, friends and worship God this morning. In our service last week, we heard from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, where he wrote about the full armour of God, the breastplate of righteousness and the shield of faith. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire and I long to worship you. So based on that beautiful imagery of Psalm 42, Rachel is now going to lead us in our first hymn, As the Deer Pants for the Water. This might be a, a new hymn to some of us. So if you do know it, then please join in with the words as the words will be on the screen. If you don't know it, then sit back and listen and reflect on the beautiful words. So, As the Deer Pants for the Water.
Rachel, thank you. God of love, as the hymn says, we love you more than any other. And now we come and join our hearts together with our prayers of approach and of confession. Now there is a response in these prayers. I will say God of love. And the response is we come together to worship you. And as I've mentioned already, we'll be finishing in our prayers by saying the Lord's Prayer together. So let us come close to God. Let us pray. God, our God, this morning we come together in our hearts and minds to worship you. We come together, each of us, from our own lives, with our own thoughts and our own hopes and our own worries. God of love, we come together to worship you. We come together to worship you. Let us bring our hearts with all that weighs on them before you this morning in worship. Unburden us, do not let us be weighed down, but instead send your spirit anew among us and clear in our hearts and minds a space to focus on you and on our relationship with you. God of love, we come together to worship you. We come together to worship you. For we come thirsty, longing for refreshment. For we come hungry, longing for sustenance. We come as your children and long to know your love. And here in this time of prayer, in this quiet and unlaboured time, we can trace the steps of the path that brought us into that right relationship with you. God of love, we come together to worship you. We come together to worship you. Our Sunday morning, waking into your new day and coming together to worship. Our Saturday and the week that has been. As your people, we have known joy. We have known comfort, we have known fatigue, and maybe we have known pain. We have, we have known love and hope, loneliness, uncertainty, and stress. So God of love, we come together to worship you. We come together to worship you. But as we cast our thoughts back, Lord, give us eyes to see that you have been with us all along. Give its hearts to know of your presence, not just today, but in every day with our walk with you. And that in our worship, we will remember your constancy in every moment of our lives. God of love, we come together to worship you. We come together to worship you. You are the God who freely loves. You have no needs or requirements. The whole universe belongs to you. Yet, as infinite, majestic and glorious God, you concern yourself with us. You care for us. You know us, each and every one of us. God of love, we come together to worship you. We come together to worship you. In Jesus Christ, you walked among us and demonstrated a love so perfect that all human history will unravel before we will fully comprehend its depth, its width, its height and its length. We come together. God of love, we come together to worship you. We come together to worship you. It is then all too tragic how poorly we reflect your love, how often we shrink from the inheritance of being your children. And how readily we shirk the responsibility to love as we have been loved. There can be no excuse for our faults. There can be no justification for the ways that we inhibit the fruitful lives of others. Or for the damage that we do to this world and to ourselves. We confess that we have sinned in what we have done or not done. In what we have said or not said. God of love. We come together to worship you. We come together to worship you. We have no hope but your forgiveness. And so we ask it in hope and in trust that your love, your perfect love, made human in Jesus Christ. Who walked among us and knows every hair on our heads and every movement of our lives. Speaks quietly 
to our troubled souls. I do not condemn you. Go and sin no more. God of love, we come together to worship you. We come together to worship you. And so rejoicing in the life of Christ and in the joy of the Holy Spirit, we ask that you will restore us anew and shape us in your ways as we pray together in the words that Jesus taught his disciples. We say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our first reading is Psalm 33. And we're going to read from, I'm going to read from verses 1 to 5 and then from verses 18 to 22. Sing joyfully to the Lord, you righteous. It is fitting for the upright to praise him. Praise the Lord with a harp. Make music to him on the ten-stringed lyre. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully and shout for joy. For the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. The Lord loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of his unfailing love. The eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, on those whose hope is in his unfailing love, to deliver them from death and keep them alive in famine. We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. May your unfailing love be with us, Lord, even as we put our hope in you. Amen. We go straight on to our second reading. Um, which is from St Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 3, verses 14 to 21. And Somersault is going to read that for us. Thank you. Good morning. This morning's reading is taken from Ephesians, chapter 3, starting at verse 14, going through to verse 21. It is entitled, A Prayer for the Ephesians. For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide and how long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, for ever and ever. Amen. May God bless this reading of his word to us today. Amen. Thank you very much, Somersault. Well, it's such a lovely evening, although it was a bit earlier on, it's clouded over a wee bitty now and I'm getting plagued with flies. Um, but I thought I'd bring you outside. And here we are on the forest track just along from our house. I love this spot. I love coming out here. It's lovely in peace and quiet. You know, seeing all the animals, the squirrels and the deer and, and whatever. And we get the osprey on the river there. But there's actually quite a good viewpoint there of the River Don. Um, now, at this point, it's not very wide because we're only about sort of 10 miles or so from its source uh, up in the Grampians. But of course, as it goes down further downstream, like through Afford and Kemney and Inverurie and through to Dice and into the North Sea at Aberdeen, 
it goes a total of 81 miles and of course gets wider and slower as it goes down through. I mean it's quite a, a steady flow at the minute. Uh, you probably can't hear it but you can just about hear the water. Um, but we've had some rain of course as we've all had lots of rain um, but uh, in after heavy rain or snow melt this can be a raging brown torrent. But although the Don is one of the uh, our major rivers around here of course the Don and the Dee um, it's quite small in compared to a lot of rivers in the UK and also in other parts of the world. So question for you did you know or do you know what is the widest river in the world? It's a good sort of pub quiz question this one the widest river well there are two actually that contend for it the one that they say is the widest is the Rio de la Plata or the River Plate which forms the border between Argentina and Uruguay uh, and at its widest point because it opens up into a wide sort of estuary it's 140 miles or 220 kilometers wide if you look at it a more traditional river than the Amazon of course has got to be also in South America that's another one that's 6.8 miles wide and then in times of flood it goes to about 25 miles so again a very wide river. What is the longest river in the world? Any thoughts? Well um, the longest river according to what I was reading is the Nile in Africa which is 4,258 miles or 6,693 kilometers. Um, again the Amazon is not far behind that. What is the highest river in the world? You might have a, some sort of guess about the the country that the highest river would be flowing through. It is Yarlung Sangpu River which rises at 14,800 feet in southern Tibet. About one third of the river flows at an altitude of over 13,000 feet and about three quarters of the river flows over 9,000 feet above sea level. So again a high river, the highest river in the world. What do you think is the deepest river? Hmm, get a few things about that one but that it actually is the Congo or the Zaire River which at its deepest point is reckoned to be about 750 feet. Now Song of Songs chapter 8 verse 7 says many waters cannot quench love rivers cannot sweep it away and in the passage from St Paul's letters to the Ephesians that Somersault read out to us he writes about the the nature of God's love and verses 17 and 18 from the New Living Translation say may you have the power to understand as all God's people should how wide how long how high and how deep is love is. May you experience the love of Christ though it is too great to understand fully. So how wide, how long, how high, how deep is God's love? Now there are many references to rivers, streams and water in the Bible from water springing from the rock in Exodus to the quiet waters of Psalm 23 from the tempest-torn waters of Lake Galilee which Jesus calmed to the water of life he offered to the Samaritan woman at the well. I actually like to think of God's love a bit like water, a bit like a river, reviving us, refreshing us, bringing us life and sustaining life. The revelation of St John mentions about the river of the water of life in the new Jerusalem flowing through the love of God from his throne. So when we first experience the love of God it can be like a, a spring of new life welling up inside us. It can be powerful like a waterfall or white water dispelling doubt and gloom. It can be gentle and serene like a mature river meandering through a green landscape. And we can be carried along by the flow, feeling safe and secure. And now we're going to sing about that heavenly love of God. As Linda, Francesca and Imogen are going to lead us on our next hymn, In Heavenly Love 
abiding. Green pastures are before me, which yet I have not seen. Bright skies will soon be o'er me, where darkening clouds have been. My hope I cannot measure, my path to life is free. My Saviour has my treasure, and he will walk with me. So Psalm 33 that we said at the beginning of this service talks about God's unfailing love. And it's important to remember that God's love will be with us every day of our lives. Christian author Rick Warren writes, God's love never wears out. So now we're going to hear our third reading from Ron. He's going to read us that very well-known reading from St Paul's letter to the Corinthians about the true nature of love. This reading is very familiar to most of us, used in wedding ceremonies and memorial services. And the problem is when, when readings become too familiar, we tend to sort of gloss over the meaning to it. So as we're listening to Ron reading this through, please think and concentrate on each of the words and reflect the meaning to each of us. So the reading is 1 Corinthians chapter 13. This reading is taken from the New Testament from the book of 1 Corinthians and we read from chapter 13 and I'm using the Good News Bible. I may be able to speak the language of human beings and even of angels but if I have no love my speech is no more than a noisy gong or a clanging bell. I may have the gift of inspired preaching I may have all knowledge and understand all secrets. I may have all the faith needed to move mountains, but if I have no love, I am nothing. I may give away everything I have and even give up my body to be burnt, but if I have no love, this does me no good. Love is patient and kind. It is not jealous or conceited or proud. Love is not ill-mannered or selfish or irritable. Love does not keep a record of wrongs. Love is not happy with evil, but is happy with the truth. Love never gives up, and its faith, hope and patience never fail. Love is eternal. There are inspired messages, but they are temporary. 
There are gifts of speaking in strange tongues, but they will cease. There is knowledge, but it will pass. For our gifts of knowledge and of inspired messages are only partial. But when what is perfect comes, then what is partial will disappear. When I was a child, my speech, feelings and thinking were all those of a child. Now that I have grown up, I have no more use for childish ways. What we see now is like a dim image in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. What I know now is only partial. Then it will be complete. As complete as God's knowledge of me. Meanwhile, these three remain. Faith, hope and love. And the greatest of these is love. Amen. Thank you, Ron. Paul writes about the true nature of love. Love is inspiring and understanding. It is patient and kind. It does not hold a grudge and is truthful. It never gives up on anyone and its faith, hope and patience is eternal. Faith, hope and love remain. But the greatest of these is love. C.S. Lewis writes, the Christian does not think that God will love us because we are good, but that God will make us good because he loves us. And now let us come close to our God of love with our prayers of thanksgiving and intercession. There is another response in these prayers. Uh, I will say God of love, the same as I did before, but the response this time is we ask you to flood this world with your love. Towards the end of our prayers, Linda, Francesca and Imogen are going to sing a reflective piece. Father, we love you. We worship and adore you. So now let us come close to God. Let us pray. Father God, whose love reaches to the highest heavens and whose righteousness stands like the tallest mountain. Father God, whose justice is deeper than any ocean and whose grace flows like a never-ending river. God of love, we ask you to flood this world with your love. We ask you to flood this world with your love. Eternal God, creator and giver of all things, we praise and thank you for all the blessings of life, for the rich tapestry which unfolds before us each day, the tasks, the opportunities, the people we meet, the friendships we enjoy, the conversations we share, and the challenges we face. For every aspect of your goodness and love, we offer you our heartfelt thanks. God of love, we ask you to flood this world with your love. We ask you to flood this world with your love. We give thanks for the gift to us of human love, for the first love that we knew at our birth, a mother's love and a father's care for the love that unites husband and wife, for the love of parents, children, grandchildren and great-grandchildren, for the love of friends and companions, God of love. We ask you to flood this world with your love. We ask you to flood this world with your love. God of love and freedom, of hope and joy. We pray for those who long to be free, for those wrongly imprisoned, for those imprisoned because of a fight for justice, because they spoke out against the tyranny of their government, because they protest the actions for their state, because they have a faith that is censored. We pray for all those who seek asylum and refuge from their past and who now live in detention centres. We pray for those who are detained for their own safety and well-being but long to be free. God of love. We ask you to flood this world with your love. We ask you to flood this world with your love. We pray for those whose helplessness condemns them to a form of slave labour. For those working unbearably long hours with little or no pay. For those increasing number of people trafficked, human lives bought and sold. We pray for those who long to be free. God of love. We ask you to flood this world with your love. We ask you 
to flood this world with your love. We pray for those in this country and across the world who are suffering from the coronavirus. We pray for countries who are finding a surge in infections and whose health systems are struggling to cope. We pray for all healthcare workers and key workers. We pray that as we see an easing in restrictions in this country, we will not see an increase in infections. Guide all those who are putting protective measures in place, those in government who are managing the pandemic and working out the best way forward. And we pray for all those who are working on a vaccine. God of love, we ask you to flood this world with your love. We ask you to flood this world with your love. God, Father, Son and Spirit, you are the God who loves freely. The God whose love is unconditional and infinite. You love each of us eternally. Enfold us into your embrace. Grant the freedom of your people in the fulfilment of our prayers. God of love, we ask you to flood this world with your love. We ask you to flood this world with your love. God, we are aware also of people in situations who are weighing heavily upon our hearts. And we ask for your Holy Spirit to intercede on their behalf. We pray for our loved ones, wherever they may be. And we pray that your loving arm will embrace them and keep them safe. In a moment of silence, Lord, we pray for all those known to us who need your special love today. God of love, we ask you to flood this world with your love. We ask you to flood this world with your love. Father, we love you. We worship and adore you. We glorify your name in all the earth. ask you to flood this world with your love. We ask you to flood this world with your love. We remember in our hearts and minds the names and faces of those whom we have loved and are now with you in paradise. Hold them close to you as we hold them close in our hearts to us until that time when we shall be re reunited in your glorious presence. God of love, 
We ask you to flood this world with your love. We ask you to flood this world with your love. God of all, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, hear our prayers spoken and unspoken, offered from the darkness and the hope of our hearts. Amen. Thank you to Linda, Francesca and Imogen. That was lovely. Thank you. Short reflection by John Birch. Your love flows like a stream into the ocean of your grace. Your love encircles this world, displays your faithfulness. Your love is patient and kind, brings wholeness and true peace. Your love is all we desire to heal our brokenness. All things pass and fade away. Love remains eternally. And now we're going to hear our fourth reading from the first letter of John, which uh, Janet is going to read for us. It's the first letter of John, chapter 4, verses 7 to 21. God's love and ours. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. We know that we live in him and he in us, because he has given of, of, us of his spirit, and we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Saviour of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in him and he in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in him. In this way, love is made complete amongst us so that we will have confidence in the day of judgment because in this world we are like him. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, he is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. And he has given us this command. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Janet. Wang Weifen, Southeast Asian author, writes, My Lord is the source of love. I, the river's course, let God's love flow through me. I will not obstruct it. Irrigation ditches can water but a portion of the field. The great Yangtze River can water a thousand acres. Expand my heart, O Lord that I may love yet more people. The waters of love can cover vast tracts. Nothing will be lost to me. As I mentioned earlier, I like to think of the love of God a bit like a, a river, like water, flowing in us, through us, and out into the world. Now, love on the face of it might be a, an easy concept to understand. I mean, if we were approached by a market researcher in the street with a clipboard and ask the question, please could you, you tell us what the meaning of love is? Then I'm sure we'd all have some, some sort of idea and come up with some sort of answer. 
I mean, we've all experienced and received love from a parent, grandparent, guardian, life partner, sibling, a child. And of course, we have all given out love, again, to a parent, a life partner, uh, a child, a grandchild. So love is very much a, a two-way process. We receive love and we give out love. So how is that different from the concept that we've been looking at, the love of God? How is it different or is it different? I mean, in the Lord's Prayer, we start off with our Father. So is it some sort of parental love that we think about? Of course, the concept of a two-way process, as far as God's love is concerned, isn't always the case. I mean, many people do not recognise God, do not believe in God, so therefore his love is not reciprocated. In Psalm 33, David was celebrating the unfailing love of God. O oh, love that wilt not let me go. That begins that beautiful and evocative hymn by the 19th century hymn writer George Matheson. I rest my weary soul in thee. Now, Chris Tomlin and Stephen Curtis Chapman released a Christian song in 2004, which they called Unfailing Love. You can maybe look it up on YouTube. And everything you hold in your hand, still you make time for me. I can't understand. Praise you, God of earth and sky. How beautiful is your unfailing love. And you never change, God. You remain the Holy One and my unfailing love. In our second reading, Paul wrote uh, about being rooted and established in love. Uh, and may have the power together with all Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. So Paul was saying that love of God is a total experience. It reaches every corner of our lives. It's wide. It covers the full breadth of our experience. It's long, it continues right through our lives. It's high, it reaches to the heights of our celebration, our joy and our elation. And it's deep, it reaches down into the depths of despair, discouragement and even death. And Paul prayed that the Ephesians would be able to understand, given the power to understand the extent of God's unconditional love. Dieter F. Uchtdorf, the German leader in the Church of Latter-day Saints and author, writes, Though we are incomplete, God loves us completely. Though we are imperfect, he loves us perfectly. Though we may feel lost and without compass, God's love encompasses us completely. He loves every one of us, even those who are flawed, rejected, awkward, sorrowful or broken. Now, in our third very well-known reading, then Paul wrote to the Corinthians about what true love is and what love should be. He was talking about the love, the sort of love that we receive from God and we should be sharing out with each other. And it finished with this beautiful phrase, of course, faith, hope and love remain, but the greatest of these is love. Now, although 1 Corinthians 13 stands alone as a testament to what love is, is all about and is used in many wedding and memorial services, um, it actually comes, follows on from another piece in the letter to the Corinthians where Paul was describing about one body, many parts and the sort of spiritual gifts that we all receive. And what Paul was saying is whatever gifts we receive, or whatever we do, then the most important of this is love. Without that, then nothing else has meaning. Love is the foundation of our faith. In John's first letter, which in my Bible is subtitled God's Love and Ours, he writes about loving one another. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. God is love. 
And surely when we've been thinking about all these characteristics from Psalm 85 over the past few weeks, that phrase sums everything up. God is love. Nick Fawcett writes, according to John, one word says it all. God is love. For some, such a definition is far too loose, so vague and insipid that it ends up saying nothing. Yet the fact is, when it comes to God, no other word will do, for God is love. It is simple and straightforward as that. The one description that says it all. And if we lose that one simple truth, we lose everything. One word to describe the one true God. But what a word and what a God. Indeed. Now, John wrote his letter as a pastoral letter to several Gentile con congregations. He wrote it as a sense of encouragement um, and also reassurance that what they were doing was fine. And just to keep going, because what you're achieving is right in the eyes of God. So that letter in these trying and challenging times could just as easy be written to us. Dear friends in the Church of Scotland, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Our Lord told us in the St John's Gospel, John 15 verse 12, my command is this, love each other as I have loved you. So what have we covered today? We've had some thoughts about love, We've had that unfailing and everlasting and boundless nature of God's love. We've had some thoughts about the nature of true love, what it should mean and what it should be like. We've had some thoughts about that God is love, that love flows from him through us out to others. We also had some thoughts about that we should love one another and we should spread God's love. I mean, love itself is such a, a massive concept, something to think about. We've only just begun on our sort of quest to discover love a bit more detail. So I'll be taking it up in our midweek reflection on Wednesday. I do hope that you'll be able to join me for that. So on the basis that we should be sharing and spreading God's love, I've chosen this final hymn that Laura is going to play for us. Um, we sing together. We sing a love that sets all people free. Now, it might be a new hymn to some of you, but I can guarantee that you will know the tune. And as the words are on the screen, please sing along. We sing a love that sets all people free.
lovely, Laura. Thank you. I do hope you're able to sing along with that one. So many thanks for joining us for our uh, worship this morning. Uh, a big thank you to Rachel, Summersall, Linda, Francesca, Imogen, Ron, Janet and Laura for helping me out with the, the service this morning. As I mentioned earlier on, I will be looking at this uh, subject of love in a bit more detail in our midweek reflection on Wednesday, so I hope that you'll be able to, to join me for that. So now as we close our worship, let us pray. Now let us go into our week knowing that we are loved perfectly, saved eternally and empowered as disciples of Jesus to share God's love with everyone who we meet. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us and those that we love this day and forevermore. Amen.